worship on testimonies of faith. So let's just begin to appreciate the Lord Most High. Let's just begin to thank Him. Let's just begin to prepare ourselves. We are here to receive something that will transform us out of light into more light that will take us and transport us from glory to glory. Let's just begin to prepare our hearts. So Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you all the praise. Lord, I glorify your name. Lord, you are mighty in this place. Lord, I stand here entering your gates with praise and your courts with thanksgiving. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I lift my hands up to you. I am here, Heavenly Father. Let us begin to switch out of the cares of the day. Let us begin to take off all those old garments and put on a garment of praise. Let us begin to appreciate him. Say, Lord, we are standing here in your presence. before the beginning of time in your own wisdom and through your servants offer yourselves as living sacrifices holy, and holy and acceptable let us begin to offer ourselves ah, so that we can be changed let us begin to offer ourselves so that we can be delivered let us begin to offer ourselves so that we can be empowered it is our time, CCCG. It is our day. It is your day of salvation. Rebel kasombe semere ralaba roto sikebera e mesto besika lanto sobe kasobe he e sobare toko sikebara tosi e rato sombe lata semere kasombe na ralaba su e reto sobara to sofa lato bast. Switch off all those channels in your spirit that are not connected to heaven and open yourself up completely. The Bible says that if your eye be single, your body will be full of light. Can we make your eye of your spirit single to receive all that he has for you this evening? All that he has for you whenever you are connecting to this. Reka sobera soberabas around the world. Open up your eye to be single to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He says to those who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness will arise over you with healing in his wings. Braco somera na mano somera kata, e besto besto besta barato se se ma. Thank you for deliverance, not just for you, but for your brothers and your sisters. Thank you for transformation, because we move as one. Can a nation be born in a day? But as soon as Zion traveled, can you microwave yourself in the presence of the Lord and prepare yourself? Lord, open up my heart, Lord, to receive from you. Say, Lord, I pine after you, Lord. Lord, we are here for you, Lord. Lord, we stand on many things. Lord, we stand on this prayer. Oh, Lord, we stand on the worship. Lord, we stand on the testimonies of faith. Above all, Lord, we stand on your word. Ha. Say, Lord, prepare our apostle, Lord. Prepare your servants to bring a word that will change me forever. Ah, this is a place where you are changed into the same image. Twenty seconds more. Ah, let us cry out to the Lord. Ah, let the channels of your spirit be aligned with His. Father, we are in your presence. Holy Spirit, take control. Jesus, we worship you. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit. Ah, Lord, we are here again. We are excited to receive from you. We thank you, Lord, for what you are doing in our lives. We thank you because, Lord, of the mighty destinies that you are providing force to move at speed. Lord, even as we enter into this service, Lord, continue with us, Lord. Arise over us with singing and with joy. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Can we put our hands together for Jesus?
perfect but he sure did love Jesus he sure did love the Lord and he demonstrated it with his dance dancing undignified and careless about it oh thank you Jesus you give us so many reasons to dance you give us so many reasons to smile oh Jesus you're so good You never fail, you never 
your nature that's just who you are you can't disappoint oh god oh jesus even when we didn't care for you oh jesus you're just too good you cannot fail you cannot disappoint
Welcome to Cornerstone Christian Church of God. This is our year of the light. Our mission and vision is to bring restoration and transformation to all by preaching, demonstrating, by preaching and demonstrating the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So we'd like to welcome all our first-time guests. If you're visiting us for the first time, we want to give you a Cornerstone welcome. Amen. Now, if you're watching from home, please scan the QR code that's on the screen. And if you're in the sanctuary, you can actually scan the QR code in the seat pocket in front of you. It's going to take you to our new guest form. We just want to get to know you a little bit, stay connected with you. Amen. Amen. And welcome you in the CCCG way. Amen. Welcome, welcome. And this will be the best Thursday of your life. Amen. So it's now time for our tithes and offerings as we continue to give to the Lord. Let's clap for giving back to the Lord. It's a privilege. So if you are giving today, please make sure that you give to info at cccghq.org. Once again, that's info at cccghq.org. But let's pause for a second. I'm a little bit ahead of myself. If you're in the sanctuary for the first time or you're at home and you're wondering, what's a tithe? How can I give back to God the right way? A tithe is 10% of your gross income that goes back to the Lord. Amen. Let's shout for joy for giving back to the Lord. Amen. <laughs> And if you have offering, you can. that's between you and the Lord. That's something that you can give in all your services or just giving back to the Lord. Amen. God always makes a way for us to give back to him. So if you are giving today, once again, that's info at cccghq.org. And if you are writing a check, please write it to Cornerstone Christian Church of God, Edmonton. Now, if you did bring cash into the sanctuary, that's absolutely okay. You can actually grab an offering envelope in the seat pocket in front of you. Make sure that you fill it out to its entirety for accounting purposes. And we have our lovely usher here. You could just wave her down, and she will come and connect with you that way. Amen. Now, if you are outside of Canada, still on vacation because God is good, hallelujah, you can scan the QR code, and that will take you to our PayPal, and you can continue to give that way. Now, as we continue to give towards Peniel, please make sure you indicate for Peniel in the memo. Let's give you guys a few more moments here. That's info at cccghq.org. Amen. Let's give a shout of praise to the Lord for the home experience that's coming to Edmonton, Alberta. This is the very first Christian corporate meditation experience. I don't even want to call it a conference because this has never been done before. We get to meditate corporately together here at 9 a.m. Let's shout for, to God for this. This is absolutely amazing. So we're going from darkness to light. This is going to be the home conference. If you are hiding under a rock and you don't know what home is, let me just enlighten you a little bit. Amen. Here at CCG, we are enlightened by the light. So home is essentially an hour of meditation where you can come to the sanctuary or you can meditate from home. But try the experience in the sanctuary also. That makes a big difference. And you get to ask questions because a debrief after. But this experience is going to be corporate. We're going to be at another location. It's not going to be here. So it's going to be, yeah, let's clap for that God is good. So it's going to be April 6th, of course, in the best month besides December. Hallelujah. Um, at 9 a.m. It's going to be in the, it's going to be at the Foundry Room Oliver Exchange. So please make sure that you invite a friend to invite a friend. Registration is open. Make sure that you register at hourofmeditation.com. The website is exquisite. It's awesome. The excellence here at CCG is at another level. Let's clap for God for all the grace. 
So please make sure that you register. Just send it to your friends. You don't have to tell them that it's a Christian meditation. Just tell them to come to meditation. That's a buzzword. And when they come, the Lord will capture them. Hallelujah. <laughs> so make sure that you register, register, register. I'm super excited about this. It's going to be awesome because we know that our, the shepherd over this movement is the point of meditation. And God is going to continue to take us from glory to glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you don't want to be meditating in the parking lot. It starts at 9 a.m. Please be here for 845 or if the doors open at 815. We want you to meditate with us, not in a parking lot. Hallelujah. Glory. God is good. <laughs> so let's shout lifted. So on March 29th, we're back at it with our night prayers. It's going to be at 10 p.m. here in the sanctuary. So please invite all your friends. I don't know about you guys, but night prayers is always packed. So if you come at 10, you're late. You want to come a little bit before that so that you can catch a C. Be in the spirit. Be meditating. When the Lord says that we have night prayers, he wants to meet with us. And too many amazing things happen. You can prepare for that. while you're, it's, it's good that you're here because you can prepare for our night prayers. And once again, that's, at March, that's on March 29th at 10 p.m. here in the sanctuary. So let's clap for the book of the month this month. Amen failing forward I, I've heard so many testimonies about this book it's by John C Maxwell and basically what it's about is um, turning your mistakes into stepping stones for success we know that we're in a society right now where they tell you that failure is not a good thing but you can actually fail forward amen so use this book couple it with the Bible and couple it with all the words that you're receiving here on a ba daily basis because you can continue to watch the services and you will be enlightened and you will never feel like a failure again amen Amen, amen. So let's shout, Jesus is on the move. Every day, every day in our lives here. CCCG doesn't have, we're not short of testimonies. There's so many testimonies here, but we would like for you to share your testimony so it can bless somebody else. So make sure that you are sending your testimonies to testimony at cccghq.org. You can tell us if you want to share live or you want us to read it. So I'm going to actually jump into a testimony from Marcel, and I'll ask Christine to prepare. And it says, leading up to Friday night prayers, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have been able to tell that I was having one of the toughest weeks of my life. Yet Jesus granted me the profound peace, freeing me from unforgiveness, shame, and guilt, and restoring my sense of identity. Thank you, Lord. I, I approach prayers with unwavering faith, expecting Jesus to intervene in my life. Throughout the week, I, plead, I pleaded for his mercy, fully anticipating restoration, transformation, and liberation. Despite my hopeful prayers, doubts lingered, and I struggled with the feeling of unworthiness. However, I'm grateful, that, I'm grateful to Jesus for meeting me right where I was. Amen? When Apostle Emmanuel prayed over me and spoke words of affirmation into my life, I felt a divine assurance that it was done, and it is done in Jesus' name. Amen? I want to express my, yeah, we can clap better than that. God is good. I want to express my gratitude to Jesus for breathing life back into my home, body, and mind. Thank you, Jesus, for your transformative work within me. I'm confident that with I'm confident that Jesus has begun in me will be perfected. Fear, guilt, and shame no longer hold me captive, for I am made whole through Christ who empowers me. I'm filled with joy that God has spared my life, allowing me to testify of his goodness today. Apostle Emmanuel, I'm extending my heartfelt thanks for being a vessel through which God has sealed my destiny. May God continue to shower you with blessings for your family and CCC. Thank you, Jesus, for your abundant grace. Thank you, Lord. Let's clap our hands as Christine comes to share her testimony. Hello. I want to thank God for delivering me from being shy. I've always been an introvert, but being bullied when I was younger made me become shy. My response to that trauma was to hide and make sure that my real vulnerable self would never be seen. By the grace of God, things started getting better eventually. But I remember talking with my cousin one day, and I said, oh, you know I'm shy. And she responded, who told you that? And that's when it, God said it was time for me to go from darkness to light, AKA register for home, amen. <laughs> so the first thing God did was to instruct me to make my Instagram profile public. I said, Jesus, why? <laughs> In one click, over 1,000 requests were automatically accepted, and I just wanted to cry, but we were there. This process is very uncomfortable at times, but it's reintroducing me to myself. 
I understood that I could be me and freely display all the aspects of my personality. I understood that it's okay for me to be quiet and peaceful and then be very lively at different times because God made me wonderfully complex intentionally. He put me in situations I would have run away from only for me to find out that I was actually at ease in them. Long story short, I'm learning to discover the original Christine and I am finally moving out of that trap and towards my vision. It may seem insignificant, but God and I know where I come from. So thank you, Jesus, for affirming me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Please silence your phones. I'm going to go ahead and bless the offering. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. Thank you for these powerful testimonies. Father, as the word comes forth, may we have a spectacular encounter with your word that will change our lives today, Father God, that will break all the trauma bonds off of us, Father. We love you. We thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Please silence your phones and enjoy the service. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. We're going to sing that song, You Are Good, You Are Kind. I've never seen time. Please go ahead.
yes. Bright shining as the sun. As the sun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing to Faithful to Fail, please. You are who you are yesterday, today, and forevermore. What you say is what you do. Mm, you never fail. I worship you.
because you're too faithful to disappoint us. You've been there from the beginning, even before we surrendered ourselves to you. We thank you because you never leave us nor forsake us. Father, thank you for tonight and what you're set to do. Lord Jesus, let healing break forth in this place. You healed our bodies, especially on Sunday. Lord, heal our soul even tonight. Heal our personalities tonight. Let there be a transformation that will live to remember in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we adore you. Let your name be forever glorified. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Somebody shout a loud amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, this is your night. Tell yourself, tonight is my night. In the name of Jesus. Let's go through our themes together. Are we excited tonight? Yeah. Amen. Please remind me, we are going to shout again tonight. <laughs> Someone said to me that the Lord said to her to shout every morning that waking up. I'm not sure how their neighbors will feel about it. But every morning once she woke up, she just shout. And I think that word is not just for her, it's for many other people. Because it's too dead around some people. You need life. You need life. Give your mouth the ability to experience motion. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's go through our themes together. One to go. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And the theme for this month, one to go. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Emmanuel, and he gathered up his loins and ran ahead of all his Ahabs to the entrance of his destiny and even further. Cornerstone, let there be light. Please clap your hands together and you may be seated. Amen. Welcome to Bible studies tonight. Some people saw the topic and they ran away. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. The trap of trauma or the trauma trap or the trapped and traumatized, <laughs> whichever way you want to adjust that topic. Let's just have a moment of silence for every trauma so, <laughs> so they can die away, amen. amen. <laughs> so we've been speaking about motion, the laws of motion. I'll keep repeating this until you hear it in your dreams. There are how many laws of motion that we explored? Four of them. Are we together? Yes, Number one is what? Everything that is alive moves. Uh, not too many people are saying it with us. <laughs> I hope you've not forgotten. Let's take that again together one to go. Everything that is alive moves. Number two, the bigger you are, the greater the force you need to move. Number three, association or interaction with things that move can also move you. So if you want to move, connect yourself with things or people that are moving. Glory to Jesus. Number four, the more consistently you move, the faster you get and the bigger you get. So it's important to keep on going. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Can we just clap for our camera person here today, man? <laughs> Amen. She's so dedicated, she's not even looking at us. <laughs> I don't know what you all are talking about. <laughs> Praise God. When some of you were that age, you don't know where you were. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. The laws of motion. So we're saying motion is more important than precision. Motion precedes precision. Some people are stuck 
and they are not moving because they are trying so hard to get the precision right before they start to move. I need to figure out everything before I move. But remember, that is just you getting stuck. But the moment you begin to move, precision will be easier. So just move. Just move. Just move. Tell your neighbor, just move. And this movement is not just physical. Even though we've been emphasizing physical movement, the Bible says the Spirit of God was hovering. The Spirit was moving, moving over the face of the waters. So just move physically. Don't do your devotion on your bed. Say, the Lord woke me up in the middle of the night. I'm awake. Lord, I'm awake. See, I'm awake. No, 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 no. Get up. Move around. It will be difficult, not impossible, to sleep while walking. <laughs> I've seen people who are falling asleep <laughs> while walking because they were so tired. But you see, it's easier for you and I to stay awake when we're in motion. Get going, get moving, move your physical body. Move your mind by interacting with materials. Read the books of the month. Glory to Jesus. Now, let's get into trauma. We want to trap trauma. Okay? I want to lose many people from the trap of trauma. Listen to me. It is easier than you think. It is easier than you think. Can you imagine someone who has a foreign object stuck in their body? And they are in so much pain, you want to remove it. I say, no, 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 no. Don't touch it, don't touch it, don't touch it. But you know as well as I do that it, if it remains there, the pain will remain. But if you remove it, there might be some pain. But we're in a much better position to heal than if you leave the foreign object in the body. Man is made up of spirit, soul, and body. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 to 24. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. So when we are dealing with trauma, we're looking for complete sanctification. Sanctification in the spirit, making sure there's no demonic force in your spirit. Only the Holy Ghost is on the inside of you. The sanctification of the soul is, is, what we, is, is, is what it means to deal with trauma. The sanctification of the body is simply about healing, physical healing. So tonight we're here to focus on the sanctification of the soul. Man is made up of spirit, soul, and body. And within the soul you have the mind that thinks. You have the will that decides. You have the emotion that feels. When trauma steps into a person's life or when a person is traumatized, their soul is damaged. The soul is what is damaged. When, when, once you understand this, it, it, it will be easier to flow through with this message. A person can be born again spirit field. That's the spirit that is sanctified. But the soul can still be damaged. And you and I will know so many Christians who are tongue-talking, spirit-filled. They love Jesus, yet you just know that they are, they, are not, they are not normal. Afraid easily, angry easily, they are gossipers. I mean, just a damaged soul. Yet they pray a lot. In some cases, God even speaks to them. They are the ones that when people are speaking about, you know, fake Christians, they are usually the ones they are referring to. And it's not because these people want to be fake, but it's because their soul is damaged. They don't have a choice but to be fake. They are unreliable because of the damage in the soul. There's a normal way of operation that the Lord has, has, has conditioned us to operate as children of God. Just like passing out waste is a sign of a healthy individual. There are a few things that we must look at in order to identify a healthy soul. A healthy soul. Number one, how do you respond to love? 
A traumatized person cannot respond to love properly. Do you second guess every show of love? Do you quickly accept or quickly deny every show of love? Are you always thinking about the, the possible loss of a loved one even while they are still alive? It's a sign of trauma with regards to loss. They are still here. They've not gone anywhere. They are young. They are in their 30s, 40s, 50s. But you are there thinking, what if they die? What's going to happen? Oh, my goodness. My life will be messed up. God forbid. How do you respond to love? I'm sure you and I have come across people. I'm sure that's not you, but your friends who cannot seem to respond to love properly. Genuine love comes, they reject it. Fake love comes, they accept it. And while they are there, they know, they know that what they are doing is not right, but they cannot help themselves. They come to a place where there's genuine love and they get so uncomfortable. Because in many ways, they don't believe that they are even a candidate of genuine love. So they look at it and say, no, there must be a problem here. This cannot be real because I, 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 I don't deserve genuine love. So they end up pushing good people away. Because even God said, my spirit will not strive with man forever. Number two, how do you respond to light? Or a person walking in light. In essence, how do you respond to perfection or excellence? How do you respond to people who have it together? You oftentimes find people who are traumatized. Let's say, for example, in relationships, when they see a good relationship or any relationship, they just, it triggers them. They see a man with his daughter, it triggers them. They believe that they, no abuse must be taking place. But it's just their own discoloration of the way life is. They don't think that there is anything like a faithful woman because they were traumatized by women. Or a faithful man, or a loving father, a loving mother, a faithful friend. Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 20, we saw Michal, David's wife. How she responded to David showing love to God in an upright manner. She just had to find a problem with that. I mean, you know, every, everybody was rejoicing, excited. But all, all she could do was find a problem. Have you encountered people like that? Then David returned to bless his household, and Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, how glorious. You know, that was sarcastic. How glorious. <laughs> was the king of Israel today, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids. Did she interview the maids? No. Did the maids complain? No. That's a wife that will claim the husband is flirtatious. When the husband is just being normal, because... Girls were laughing at his jokes. But she's the one that is insecure. And vice versa. As one of the base fellows, shamelessly, shame, I mean, see, look at this, thing, amen. Shamelessly uncovers himself. But she had a problem. David was not dancing nude, he was, he was, he was normal. But because of her own personal issues, why wouldn't you be damaged with a father like Saul? <laughs> so Mika was, was messed up. 
Saw a man like David and just expressing so much love to God and excitement and joy. All she could do is just find issues with it. And it still happens in the house of God. Like some are worshiping their God, thanking him, and some are the, the ones looking, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, you know. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Post something online. You always find one Mikau <laughs> that will find a problem with it. <laughs> it's just best to ignore them. And that's what David did here. So being around such people can, 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 would always lead to offense in your heart because they will always look for issues, problems e everywhere. Number three, how do you respond to suffering or pain or challenges? You know, <laughs> life is made beautiful by the challenges we go through. We have jobs today because there are problems, and we are being paid to solve those problems. But you see, when trauma comes into the picture, a person will have a very warped relationship with pain and challenges. Either they long for it, or they get triggered by it. The Lord has delivered her now. Someone shared her story with me of trauma, how when she started to drive, she got stuck somewhere. Her car got stuck. And she called a loved one to come assist a parent, one of her parents. And that parent said, I'm coming. And till today, has not come. And what now began to happen to that person was, any time she got stuck, it just triggered her. It's very interesting. You see, trauma does not happen because of the incident. It's because of our response to the incident. Because you might look at that and wonder, ah, ah, I mean, what's, it, what's, what's, what's wrong with that? Someone said they were going to come. They didn't come. Until you, you realize that perhaps it was in, in the middle of the road and in the middle of the night. And this person was a father. I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming right now. Right now. I'm coming. And then texted and called. I'm on my way. And never showed up. So until before Jesus dealt with it, any time there was any little issue with the car, it would just seem like, oh my goodness, the world is coming to an end. And the response was just exaggerated. Not because she wanted to, but because of the history with that pain and with that challenge. Someone might be wondering, why, why do we need a message like this in church? Let's just talk about Jesus coming soon. <laughs> if, if you allow trauma to remain in your life, you might not make the rapture. This world, the, 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 the devil is too devilish. Even people who are stable still get attacked fiercely and ferociously. How much more those who are damaged? Imagine trying to run away from a lion with a broken leg. Not the lion with a broken leg, you. <laughs> As it is, running away from a lion is a feat on its own. But now the leg, the leg is broken. And, you, and, you, and lion is just saying, ah, okay, okay. <laughs> That's what trauma does. It weakens our ability to respond to the devil that goes about like a roaring lion looking for whom to devour. Now you ask me a question, who is more susceptible? The one who is damaged or the one who is whole by the grace of God? Obviously a damaged person. How do you respond to sufferings, pains, challenges? People who are most likely traumatized, they, they have the woe is me mentality. When any little thing happens, they lose five dollars. Oh, my life, I'm cursed. This is how my life, and you're wondering what, what's your problem? <laughs> what's your problem? Jesus was nailed on the cross. 
way beyond five dollars that you lost. Do you absolutely lose your identity, morals, ethics when you're being attacked? That is what happened to Peter. That's why Jesus could predict that he would deny him <laughs> because of the trauma. Jesus could predict that Peter would lose his morals in the face of death. There are many people who love Jesus genuinely, but the damage is not allowing them to translate that love into action. But that's what Jesus is dealing with tonight. Can somebody shout a believing amen? amen? You look at someone like Joseph and you can understand one of the reasons why he was able to stand is because he was not traumatized. Yeah, but, but what he went through with his brothers, no, no, no. The, the foundation of love was so strong that when the brothers did what they did, he was still able to stand strong. So it's not necessarily what we go through, it is how we go through it, and who is the one going through it. Number four, how do you respond to truth? Do you rather believe an assumption than to confirm it? I've seen this over and over and over again in many of the people whom God has delivered from trauma. A lot of them live their life based on assumptions. Because it takes confidence to confirm something to be true or false. What do I mean by what I'm saying? You know, you get an idea that Pastor David does not like you. A traumatized person will just take that idea and believe it's the word of knowledge. <laughs> and just run with it. Because that is, that is what you believe. The Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth is confirmed. A traumatized person will be comfortable believing that because that's what they, they believe is supposed to happen. They come to a place newly, they expect everybody to hate them. So, so the moment they begin to see a person behaving in a particular way, they say, yeah, that's, that's confirmation. And what do they call that? Confirmation bias. But a person who is not damaged can go to him and say, hey, I, I, say, you, you, I say hi to you. You, you, you. you don't say hi back. Is everything okay? Is your day okay? Because I don't think the problem can be me. Yeah. Are you having a great day? Is your dog okay? Is your cat fine? <laughs> you don't have a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many things, how many reasons a person can have for not responding to you when you say hi to them? How many legitimate reasons, including maybe their ears are blocked? It's a legit, it, 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 it's the truth. I remember there was a time, <laughs> you, know, you know when they say don't put stuff in your ear and the, 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 um, Q-tips, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't get that memo. So one day, many years ago, I was trying to get stuff out, but I was pushing stuff in. And next thing I knew, uh, hello. <laughs> May you not lose your hearing in Jesus' name. Everything. Uh, uh, to hear, I had to turn. <laughs> so I had to wait for at about 18 hours for the clean. This happened in the evening. To go through the night into the next day and wait for the clinic to open to go there so they can flush out the wax from the air. Now imagine someone greeting me <laughs> during that ordeal and say, Apostle did not respond. So he doesn't like me. Because it didn't occur to you that he was using the <laughs> Q-tips. <laughs> And he pushed the wax in, and responding to you is the least of his concern <laughs> in that moment. So trauma makes us to hold on to assumptions. Everything is always about you because you are in pain. Everything. That's one of the things highlighted in the book for this month. 
Get over yourself. Everybody else has. It's a whole chapter. Tell your neighbor, get over yourself. Everybody else has. <laughs> but what trauma does is it makes people to be so conscious. You can't be in pain and not be conscious of the pain all the time. So because you are feeling the pain, it means that it was done intentionally. But that's not true. Look at a very funny story in Acts chapter 28. I want us to spend time in how to deal with it as opposed to, because a lot of you already know that trauma is traumatizing. Acts chapter 28 from verse 1 to 6. Acts chapter 28 from verse 1 to 6. Now when they had escaped, they, they, they then found, found out that the island was called Malta. Malta, 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 Malta. <laughs> and the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and made us all welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. Now watch this. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper, we all know what a viper is, came out because of the heat, not because he was coming to bite Paul, because the viper knew he was an apostle. <laughs> and fasting on his hand, okay, so when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no doubt, no doubt. Somebody say assumption. No doubt, this man is a murderer. Though he has, you see, they must have felt smart when they were saying it. But we can laugh at them now because we know the future they didn't know. Though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow to live. So, he shook up the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. Now, verse 6. <laughs> However, they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down dead. Assumption again. But after they had looked for a long time <laughs> and saw no harm come to him, they what? They changed their own minds. And said, he was a god. <laughs> May your enemies change their mind about you. <laughs> this is evidence that these people were traumatized. <laughs> they would have seen bypass so many times, seen people die so many times, that they said, no, 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 this one is going to die. So people who are traumatized, they, they make assumptions. Assumptions in marriage, assumptions in relationships, assumptions in almost everything. And of course, it damages the relationships. They send you a text message, you don't reply on time. They'll make an assumption. And what would that assumption be? No doubt. <laughs> you don't want to respond to me. No doubt you are not a good friend. No doubt you hate me. And on and on and on. Whereas somebody else might think, hmm, maybe he changed his phone. And you know you can lose messages when you change your phone. Mm -hmm. Some still don't agree. Say it's a lie. He didn't respond. <laughs> Trauma is a dangerous and a damaging thing. You send them, they send you a message on WhatsApp. You don't reply because they assume that everybody gets notification in front of their phone. So they assume, no, you would have seen it. You, would have, you saw it <laughs> and you ignored it. it. It hasn't occurred to them that some people don't like distractions. And they don't have any, if they don't go to the app, they will not see the message. But they will still say, no, it's a lie. You saw it, you ignored my message. What are the most frequent trigger points? Where does it really happen? Number one, towards God. Trauma always, 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 always have a higher likelihood of happening in the area of love. Towards God, number one. Some of you might have seen what our brother Kanye West was saying recently. For those who are all over the internet, or maybe the internet came to you. <laughs> now, oh, you know, 
and this and this and that. I, don't have, I didn't have time to watch the whole thing. I'll never have that time. <laughs> In Jesus' name. It's just a, a section of it where they were asking him about his faith. You know, when he was going around uh, doing um, Jesus, his, his king tours, many were saying he's, he's, you know, and I said, please, hold on. This is a new believer. <laughs> Just hold on. Hold on. And many church leaders damaged him by giving him platforms that he, he should not have been given as a new believer. But that's besides the point. He said, oh, you know, there are many times when he called on God, prayed about things. It never happened. God never came through for him. So now he's too busy to pray. He just takes action and this and you can sense, sense trauma. God, I called on you. You didn't answer me. So I'm going to do without you. I'm going to ignore you. A lot of people. You know one thing I realized? God is so, is so steady and confident that... Um, no matter what you do or don't do, he's God. It's like getting angry with the sun because you expected it to rise. At one time, it didn't rise. The, the sun will just rise in its own time majestically, <laughs> whether you are angry or not. I've realized that as you grow in your faith, you begin to see that answers to prayers is dependent on what God knows you can do versus what he knows you cannot do by yourself. Many of us know, in fact, most of us know, it, it, it's foolhardy to be praying, sitting at home saying, oh God, send your angel to bring me food now like he brought for Elijah. Uh, and by the way, um, I want, <laughs> I want, um, I want four. Okay. <laughs> and bassa fish, uh, not chicken. Many of us know it, it, it makes no sense. But imagine if you didn't know that. Until today, you are there on your bed hungry. <laughs> oh, God, you brought Elijah food. Father, liko <laughs> shatayata. <laughs> and then you come out and say, oh, God did not answer you when you called. Even when you were hungry and he knew you were hungry. But, the, but many people don't know the things they should pray about and the things they should get up and do. So some have been taught to pray about things they should do and to do the things they ought to pray about. So that's, that's, that's his problem. This place was going to be renovated. I was not going to pray and say, oh God, send your angels. Legions of angels. The angel for building. The angel for drywall. <laughs> angel for for windows, angel for uh, HVAC. <laughs> no. <laughs> we had enough wisdom not to do that. But some people don't. So some uh, believe that God has traumatized them. They believe that God left them hanging when they needed him the most. God, when this person was beating me up, I was crying to you, why didn't you step up? Why didn't you do something? And many of such pains that people have experienced. Number two, also in the area of family, most people who have been traumatized next to God, that of God, most people don't acknowledge. They are too afraid to acknowledge that. But most people have been traumatized in the family. And I want to say this clearly. Even children traumatize parents. I've not yet seen maybe one or two parents have come to talk about the trauma their children caused them. And I think it's high time we do because some children, they, they have PhD in traumatizing parents. They only respond, reach out when they want to reach out. They just, they are, they, they are masters at using people. And they believe your parents, you have to be there anyway when they are ready. And so on and so forth. Many, 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 many children have traumatized their parents. The ability to love, the, the, the parents are damaged. Imagine point love and point, point love like point water in a desert. 
And the same child will carry the love to, to some friend that, that they will lose in two weeks anyway. And they will still come back to the same parents. And the same parents would care for them and restore them. Many parents are troubled, but they can't say anything because, I mean, it's my responsibility. But may the Lord heal the hearts of parents. Do you know what it's like to invest so much time in a child and not see the returns from that investment? Many of you that have gotten to that section of the book where he was speaking about John Wesley's mother. And he told the mother to write a book that will help other parents to parent properly. And she said she's not sure if anybody will need to want to read such a book because she dedicated the, 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 her prime 20 years to raising her children. Imagine that kind of investment for her. It looks like it paid off. John Wesley shipped England. He was the founder of the Methodist Church. Charles Wesley, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, anointed uh, 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 um, um, in writing hymns and, and, and all that. But for some, unfortunately, all they know they lost was time, but nothing was gained. It's very traumatic. It's like, it's like investing a million dollars into, into a business that, that, that came with lots of promises, only to realize that every, everything is just gone. And yet you cannot cry because you don't want to condemn, condemn the child. It's trauma. And of course, we know all too well that parents can traumatize children too because of the imbalance of power. And then also, you can traumatize yourself. You know what is right, but you keep doing what is wrong. And finding yourself back in a very bad place. And you're looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, what is your problem? Do you want to destroy me? <laughs> <laughs> and you are looking at you and saying, what is your problem? <laughs> Hallelujah. How do we deal with trauma? How do we deal with trauma? There are four steps. Number one, admit that you are traumatized. Admit, 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 admit. This requires sincerity and humility. Admit that there's something wrong. There's something wrong. There's something wrong. Admit, admit. It takes humility. I have a problem. The moment you say the grace, I just run away. Yet, deep down in my heart, I want to make friends. It's not normal. And then you rush home and you're asking yourself why you're in the car. Why am I rushing now? Why am I going, going to a home empty? It's just me in the house. Yeah, there are people. Ah, okay, you know what? Bible studies. I'll stay a bit. But now, you are still preparing to run away. <laughs> the moment you see the grace, you're already ready to run. Maybe we would, would install a lock in the door that will just open on <laughs> after te 10 minutes after we've said the grace. Just to enable people to just mingle. Admit there's a problem. And you know, people around us can help us to come to that conclusion. Situations can help us come to that conclusion. And this is where God now comes in. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. God in his knockings can make some things obvious to us. And hey, there's, there's a problem. There's something wrong. This is not the way you are supposed to be. For many people, he can even show them pictures of when they were younger, pre-trauma. Areas, things you might not have even remembered, or families or loved ones would have told you. Do you know when you were younger, you used to be very, very, you, you used to be a bundle of joy. You say, really? Bundle? <laughs> of joy? And, and this would help us to begin to think, to say, no, 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 this, this. There's, there's something wrong. Admit. Admit. 
Admit. Number two, recount. Recount what happened. Let me tell you why many, why these things become traumatic. When an incident happens, it puts people in shock. It puts people in a state of shock. And the moment you get to that state of shock, you are no longer able to respond the way a normal person should respond to a situation. So when you're dealing with trauma, after you've admitted, we now need to go back and re recover the files and replay the whole thing. So we can take you through what you've never gone through. Because some people think the fact that they think about the incident a lot means they've gone through it. It's like you're, you're in the beginning of a trail. You're looking through the trail, but, but, but you, 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 you've not, never passed through the trail. If I may, I'll use the example of sexual abuse, which is all too common. Something happened. The person was abused sexually. They know something happened. And because of the shock, the mind, in order to protect you, has kept many aspects of it locked up. You know something happened. You know there's something. You, 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 you remember that you cannot think about it because it will bring pain. But you know something happened. It's like knowing there's a, there's a, there's a masquerade or, or you don't know masquerade. Maybe there's, there's, a, there's a clown in a room. You, you know. You know, and you're afraid of clowns. Not you, but your friends. Okay? So you know there's something behind that door. My wife and I went to a place and, and today and, and said there's a, there's, they wrote, put a note on the door. And it's a dog. Beware of dog. It's a dog inside that room. So that's enough notice for you. <laughs> uh, it was a Rottweiler. So you open the door. It might be the door to heaven. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They are not that bad. Amen. But still beware. Amen. Recount. And this will require vulnerability. Have enough paper towels. Have enough things to, to, to wipe your tears because it is important that tears flow. In fact, this is one of the evidences that you, that you are healing. When you see a wound and you don't see blood, you know that that wound is a very, 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 very deep wound. <laughs> you know it is, it is um, the, it, it, ah, may you never see where a person's hand or something was cut off. You know, the ones where you, you cut off and then you still see blood just pop out like a tap. A lot of that is movies. Of course, there are certain conditions where that can happen. Because uh, the nurses are already wiggling their nose. Amen. Just let me stay in my lane. But, but what I'm trying to tell you is this. You see, when you have admitted that there was a problem, I, I'm, I'm going to get to whether you need external or internal help shortly. But I want to go through the process first. You are now recounting, going through with a guide. Whether that guide is the Holy Spirit or a human spirit. We'll talk about that shortly. Now, it's important you go through every single aspect of what happened. And this is where it's tricky with certain types of trauma. But you need to go through every, uh, every trigger point. You need to go through it. If you go to John chapter 8... It's important we go to scripture so that people will know that things are scriptural. Chapter 8, from verse 1. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. Okay? Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the mists. Mm. 
Thank you, Jesus. They said to him, teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. So this woman was faced with death. And she knew that those people were going to kill her. So her life was hanging in the balance. But what do you say? If Jesus had said, sure, no problem, she would have been dead. This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground, so this was suspense for the woman. We're looking at this from the perspective of the woman now. She was just there in the midst. She, 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 she knew the law because there was nobody that didn't know the law in, the, in, in those days, especially with regards to this. She knew that in, in, in a moment she might be dead and it would be a gruesome death. So she was just there, just waiting. What's going to happen? Is this how my life is going to go? What about the man that I was committing the adultery with? He's one of those carrying the stone. <laughs> but Jesus stood down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. <sighs> Whose perspective are we looking at this from? The woman. Jesus is telling the men to stone me. Just, these are Pharisees that claim they are not sinners. So from the woman's perspective, Jesus was aiding and abetting her killing. And she was watching. Then he again stooped to the ground. No attempt to stop them in quotes. Now, then those who heard it being convicted by their conscience, I mean, this played out in a way that she was, she was not even expecting. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing in the midst. Now, look at verse 10. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? You see, in this one these two questions, Jesus took her through the process of dealing with trauma. Where are they? Think about what you've been through. <laughs> Think about what you've been through. Think about your accusers, number one. Think about those who have condemned you, including yourself. So just pray for me, pray for me, so the trauma will go. No, no, no. There are questions that must be asked. Asked. And she gave a response, Lord, no one. Which means I have forgiven all of them. We're going to get to that shortly. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. So go and sin no more. And, and trauma was dealt with just like that. If only we can just operate like the master. But in this day and age, if you go through this with someone, you know, like Naaman was expecting Elisha to do Dramatic things. Uh, you go through this with many people, they will not think this is enough. Are we together? So recount. Recount. I know it's painful. You don't want to, but you have to. You have to. So many things have been privileged to help people to walk through. A lot of them I can't even repeat here because of how, how, how gruesome they were. But, but, but I can assure you that all of them began to experience a release. Do, do I, can't, can't I go through this without talking about it? No, no, you have to. And I'll say two things about this very quickly. Number one, don't try to protect anybody. When you are recounting trauma. You see, especially those who were traumatized by their parents or their friends or by loved ones. Because one major thing people do is they make excuses for people. Oh yeah, and my dad does, but he's a, he's a good man. Nobody's saying he's a bad person. We're just stating a fact of what happened. Some are saying in some cases it was bad. 
Imagine yourself just giving an account. You're just stating what happened. So some people want to protect other people. So they twist the truth and twist, twist this here and hide this one here and hide that one. Those types of people don't get delivered from trauma. They don't. They are the ones that will come back again and say, oh, there was this information that was not shared. This was not shared. Because they, they will not experience a release. And don't try to protect yourself either. Because remember, all you're doing is imagine someone eating something and then the, 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 the food got stuck. Now they are choking to death. And someone has to come to, to push it out. If you keep any of such things, it can hamper and hinder the recovery process. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Recount, which would require vulnerability. Vulnerability. And number four. Number three, sorry. So admit. Number two is what? Recount. And number three, reevaluate. The goal from this is to get understanding. One big question people ask when they've been traumatized, but why did this happen to me? Why? They get stuck on the why. Why? Why? This is where wisdom is needed by whom, whoever will be assisting someone through trauma. I've, I've heard of many people, I've seen many people just trying to be very, 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 uh, uh, what's the word? You know, where, 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 you know, when someone loses a loved one and, and they just say bland things like, oh, yeah, 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 don't worry, he's going to be with the Lord. Yeah, the person was an unbeliever. You're just lying. <laughs> You're lying. Just keep quiet and say, may the Lord comfort you for the loss. So people say casual things. They just say nice things but are not true. Yeah, I'm sure all things will work together for your good. Some things that even they themselves don't believe. So you have to be able to help a person to answer the question, why did this happen? Why did the father sexually molest his own daughter or son? Why? Why was I beaten over and over and physically abused? For many years, and God couldn't, even though I cried in the closet and prayed, God could not come to rescue me. These are questions they're asking themselves. Why? Why them? And you have to be able to answer such a question. And there are some questions we don't have answers to. And the best thing to do is to say, you know what, I don't have an answer. I, I, and, and there are quite a number of people have told that already. I, I I really don't know. I don't know. Because you don't want to be saying too much. And you think you are trying to help somebody. But down the line as they are trying to recover, the words you spoke, because you were just running your mouth, and you were just say, now they are coming to you and saying, yeah, so you said God will be able to do this. And you're like, um, that's not really what I was trying to say. <laughs> I was just trying to help you. <laughs> Why? Did this happen to me? That's where people get stuck and they can't move forward. Why? Why did the father lose his job? The mother lose her job? Even though the parents were prayerful, were givers, and then they suffered in poverty in their, in their, in their, in their, in, in their early years. Why did that have to happen? Why did that happen? You know, all you have to do is to, is to grow up, experience life, and then you realize that there are many things you don't have an answer to. We know why Job went through what he went through. But if you read the book of Job, in, from Job's perspective, Job never knew. Yet, you, you, imagine you are the one helping Job to go through that trauma. Where in one week he lost as much as it, yet he was a devout man. What, what kind of encouragement will you give him? 
it is well, you know, these things happen sometimes. Really? <laughs> why, why a person will lose all, all his children? And then all the money, everything, one day? No, just say you don't know. Just say you don't know. Say, let's pray for revelation together. I, I have no idea. But what I can assure you of, I'm here for you. But as to why it happened, I don't know. I don't know. Understanding. And sometimes I don't know is, a, is the best answer to a person in this stage of dealing with trauma. I don't know. Try explaining to a child the effect of the parent's divorce and the damage it has had on the child. And try explaining why God allowed it to happen. Because for many people, everything is back to God. Try, try explaining it to that child. And how his stepmom or his stepfather had to step in and then abuse him. Now try, try explaining that to the child. Yeah, the child is seeing other families, looking normal. Why, 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 do, why is mine like this? Where is God in this whole situation? However long a person needs to stay in the stage of reevaluation, however long, however long, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But I can assure you, when you allow yourself to properly go through the process of reevaluation, recounting is you just telling the story. Reevaluation is now understanding your experience, understanding the why of your experience. Understanding, understanding the why of that experience. It's very easy to tell people, you are the way you are because of, you know, you are why you are because of why you are. And all those wonderful things. But, but, but try explaining to them in that situation. Try going to Naomi, who lost her husband and lost her two sons. And try explaining to her that, you know, God is good. And his mercies end you. Which mercy? The mercy you get is a slap. And just forever. <laughs> try, try, try coming up with some fancy things because you left Israel. You shouldn't have gone. No, no. Many other people left too. Who didn't lose their husband and lose their sons. That's, that's the area where we need the Holy Ghost the most. We need the Holy Spirit the most. Not fake prophetic Things, oh yeah, yeah, you know, gosh, your, your, your latter would be better than your former. You, you better have validation of that. Have validation of that. Or God is just trying to test you. Really? Because, it's because you have a great destiny. So every great destiny <laughs> lost their husband and lost their children. But yet, we know in all things we give thanks. So the reevaluation is helping people get to a point where even if you don't understand, we, we can rest on the sovereignty of God. This is where Romans chapter 8, verse 28 and 29 comes in. Can we please read that? Romans chapter 8, verse 28 and 29. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. All things, I, I don't know how it's going to work out, but we know that all things, works. I, I, I heard from a man, I heard a man say this today. I heard him, I heard it today, but he didn't say it today. Where the father was sick, he was by the father's bedside, the sister was praying for healing, but he was there. The father took his last breath in his presence. And the man said, he just looked, and it just occurred to him that, see, yeah, this is God has healed the father. This is healing. While the sister was in pain and groaning and all that, he just looked and just got that understanding that this is the healing. You don't get those types of things with your head. It's the, it's the Holy Ghost 
that brings such truth that you might not be able to explain, but you just know that this is the truth. And the moment you get that truth, it will what? It will set you free. Others are expecting you to be stuck, but you are set free. Say, no, no, this man is healed. Can never be sick again. Glory to Jesus. Oh, the best place to be when you are reevaluating is in the presence of love. And God is love. It's, it's in that presence. Understanding is way better. Not, not, not while you're high. Not while you're drinking with your, or, or in the club trying to resolve trauma. No. <laughs> the devil wants to drive you there to further destroy you. But you want to be in a place of love. That's the best way to understand what has happened. But, 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 but can, can, I, can I be very frank with you? I will not say the other aspect. <laughs> Everybody will have chapters of their lives they cannot understand. Perhaps until you meet with Jesus. Except maybe you've locked yourself up in a, in a, in a box somewhere with no experiences. But, but I, I firmly believe, otherwise we don't need faith. Every human being will have chapters of their lives they cannot understand, except with the help of the Holy Spirit. Somebody is helping other people get jobs. There's an individual like that. Help people with their resume, help them. In the same field, help them interview prep, they'll get the job. He did not get it. Yet he applied, and he helped them. Just things you can't explain. And then number four is where, is what now takes time, the reformation. So number one, admit. Number two, what? Recount. Number three, reevaluate. And number four, reformation, reform. This is the area where you go and sin no more. The adjustment of lifestyle. Crying will not help to heal you from trauma. But crying is a byproduct. It's evidence that you have been healed. The most critical aspect, please listen to me. The most critical aspect of the previous phase I just explained, reevaluation, is forgiveness. The moment you are beginning to understand, you've recounted, you begin to reevaluate, you must forgive. You must. All these are stages. One would lead you to the next, and to the next, and to the next. You cannot begin your healing or reformation process if you have not forgiven. And forgiveness is a gift. Forgiveness is a, they don't have to deserve it. It's a gift to yourself. If you look at people who were raised in Africa, for example, I can speak about Nigeria, you, you hardly find young girls who were not molested one way or the other. From mild, if there's anything like that, molestation, to extreme molestation. Because of the communal, communal nature. Whether it's an uncle, a house help, a gate man, or a gate boy. Somehow, somebody would have been... If, if you were not, you, you're just you are, you are an anomaly. It's so sad. It's so sad. And many parents you today don't even have any idea... That their daughters have been molested. No idea. Under their watch. No idea. When you begin to see a child, say they don't want to go to that person's house anymore. And they start crying, and you are still forcing them. Why not ask yourself? You used to be comfortable going there. Why, what changed all of a sudden? Children are always children, but when you see the same thing, you need to pause and say, you know what? Okay, I'm not going to take you there. Something must have happened. 
regardless of what it is, the end result of reevaluation is forgiveness. And when I help people through this, I beg them, no matter what they've done, for your sake, you need to forgive. I've often seen people go through that process and they're talking, explaining things, crying. But the moment they get to the point of now you should forgive, that's where the real breakdown occurs. It's like they are, they are now letting go of, of something they've held in their hand. It, it's almost like, so you want me to let this person go free? But let me tell you something. Imagine in our justice system, if there's a thief, and you have a gun to the thief's head. And then the police are, don't you know you have to let down your own gun first? And let the person go into the hands of the police before justice can be served? Many people don't know that it's because they've not forgiven that God has not avenged them. Because some are looking at them and nothing has happened to him, nothing has happened to her. It's because you haven't forgiven until you forgive, God cannot step in to avenge that situation on your behalf. You need to, we need to get out of the way for God to step in. And that is Matthew chapter 18, the story of the unforgiving servant. Step out of the way. Forgive. Forgiveness is not you letting the person go free. It's you letting yourself go free. I won't go into details, but, you know, someone was helped through certain situations of abuse, and that's from, that's been there, that, that happened many, many years ago. When she eventually forgave, let go of it, and then it came into the hands of the judge. You know, after 10 years, a person can still go and say, go and report to the police that something happened. Right? Yes. Uh-huh. Spiritually, it can happen for up until four generations. So the moment she let go and it came into my hands, I, I knew I was very, very angry. And that's now the time for retribution, avenging of, of the harm on her behalf. Oh, yes. And the person was in trouble. They were in trouble indeed. They started calling frantically. Someone that had not called in, in how many years? 10, 10 years plus? 10 or 15 years. I don't want to look in that direction. <laughs> started calling frantically. I said, don't, don't pick up the call. Oh, yeah, because fire is already burning in a different country. In a different country. In a different country. We dealt with the situation Today, I think the next day or two days later, the person was calling frantically. Until you let go, God cannot avenge that situation. No matter the pain. For those who have been through boarding school, especially the way we went through it. It's a, it's a bastion of, of, of trauma. <laughs> Ah, many parents don't know why their children are, are crying when they're about to get into the please, please. Yeah. Do you love me? <laughs> and they think the kids are just lazy. No, there are some demonic principalities and powers. <laughs> Rulers of darkness of this age. Those men in those days with beards. Thick guys. They are wondering what have you done with your life? But, but jokes about a lot of those are seniors then. They are not doing well in life. Oh, they are not doing well in life. A lot of them are not doing well. Mm. What they took us through. I, I've, got, I've been through a de-traumatizing process. I've let go. I was seeing them in my dreams. I don't want to tell you some of the things that we, we experienced. Because it's not about me, it's about you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then you get to reformation, where you now begin to change. The moment you forgive, now you now begin to rediscover yourself. A traumatized person does not know who they are. 
trauma would not have allowed you to grow properly. Would not have allowed your soul to grow properly. But the moment you forgive, you begin to realize you're actually not an introvert. You're an extrovert. It's trauma that, <laughs> that locked you up inside a, a, a room and you started to pretend. And some think they're extroverts, but actually they're not. They're actually... In. The moment you deal with it, you forgive, you now see the ease. With, imagine having a muscle pull. And that muscle pull has been there for five years. You think this is the normal way of working. You, you, think, you, you think that's the normal way until you are healed. And suddenly you realize, oh, I can actually stand straight. I can move my legs. I can. <laughs> you know, there are some of our brothers, the way they walk and they just, you know, they give you the bounce. You're like, man, I, 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 I can give some bounce, you know. <laughs> Reformation. Where the mind, some people don't know their minds can be actually very quiet. They are not going through aut automatically what happened five years ago, ten years ago. You go through it, you think, and then you stop. You move forward. You, suddenly, you're, you're forgiven. So there's no need to go back to that again. You now realize you can actually start moving forward. This is why we are looking at this in this month of transportation by light. No matter the power of God that comes upon you, if there's trauma, you'll still be stuck. You still, the power will just push you down into the ground. You'll still be stuck. You see, all you have to do is yield. Some people are here now thinking, now, who am I going to tell that, that somebody molested me? But it's a family member. Who are who would like to? No, no, no. You're going ahead of yourself. Just accept that you are going to deal with it. Now, let me tell us. External help versus internal help. Remember, when I began to teach about trauma, I'd, we have not yet started the hour of meditation. You see, I cannot, in all good conscience, please listen to me, recommend that a person goes to any Tom, Dick, and Harry to help them to go through dealing with trauma. I cannot give such a recommendation with a good conscience, with a straight face. I, I, it, it's because I understand so much, so much, the damage that can be caused, the extra damage if you share certain things with the wrong people. So when we started the process or started the hour meditation, it brought me so much joy. So I want to teach now for a few minutes for the first time how to deal with trauma through meditation. You see, the Holy Ghost has the ability and capability if you are up to the task, if you are willing, yeah, some people have to talk to other people. Some have to talk. And we're here. We're present. We're available. Just reach out. An appointment will be booked, and you'll be helped. All right? And I believe life group leaders, you can speak to a life group leader, your, your ministry lead. If you don't have any of such, then you need to start serving or join a life group. Don't say, Apostle said, if I'm not in a life group, I'll remain traumatized. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we have a system. But listen to me, please. The moment you start to meditate, you, you know something is wrong with you. You know you're not okay. You, you know there's a problem. There's trauma. So when you begin to meditate, regardless of the topic, all you have to do is, point step number one, admit there's a problem. Just admit there's a problem. Once you have made that decision, and then the more you meditate, the more Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 will begin to play out. 
where he will begin to tell you, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. This is what the Holy Ghost will begin to do. So long as you have admitted. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So long as you've admitted. When you begin to walk with the Lord, as you begin to meditate, one day he will show you a picture or take you back to certain incidents that represents the trauma. He will tell you something that happened, either by picture or by word or by perception. Do you know that this happened to you when you were a child? That's him knocking on your door. If you want him to come in, allow that conversation to happen. Oh, really? Remember Samuel was hearing God, but God did not say much. Until Eli told him how to continue the conversation with God. Now tell him, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. If you want to go the route of meditation in dealing with this, it is faster, it is easier. All right? But it doesn't work for everybody. Some people will have to talk to a human being. But listen to me. Once you've admitted, and you come and, do you know that this happened? The moment you agree, then he begins to take you through the process. He begins to take you through the process. You might still have to talk to a person, but you might not need to go into the weeds like you would if you don't use meditation. Because he will suddenly take you through. It's almost like a movie that is fast-forwarded. And then you get to the end. Then that's where you now have to now forgive. You say, oh my goodness, so this happened. So this is how it happened. But why did this happen to me? And the Holy Spirit will help you understand. And then at the end, you forgive. One clear thing you must expect to experience after dealing with trauma is you become light. Because trauma is weight. You become light. Mentally light, which means you're just peaceful. Emotionally light. Some don't know why they're always stressed. It's not your job. Or maybe it's not your relationship. But the moment you've dealt with the trauma, you feel lighted. You feel, you feel light. No wonder it helps with speed. You can now be transported properly. You feel light. You feel light. Oh, and please, believers, listen to me. Dealing with trauma is a lifetime thing. It's like an onion. The Holy Ghost can never bring every aspect of our past to us at once. Nobody will be able to handle that. But enough for you to move forward and move forward and move forward. So you see someone in their 60s, 70s, 80s, remembering something that happened when they were younger. And remember, trauma is not just something that happened when you were young. Some people might have been traumatized yesterday because of a relationship that broke up or, or a job that was lost. So if we're always talking to human beings to deal with trauma, it, 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 it will be a very inefficient process. But as, as we go about our daily lives, there are so many opportunities for people to experience trauma and pain. Something that will just make you feel stuck. And you cannot, why did this happen? Praise Jesus. It's why one of the times when people are most likely to lose their faith is when they lose a loved one. That's when many people are most likely, they might still be coming to church, but they've lost their faith. And for some, they even stop altogether. This is trauma. It's trauma. You don't know why you've just become like a rock, emotionless. That's not normal. That's not normal. Some people can only give, but you can't, they can't receive from you. 
They will, they will give so much, you, you, you not even know that they have a problem until you try to be a blessing to them. Then you now realize, oh my goodness, this person is not okay. It's not okay. Meditation. Meditation. So let me give you a tip, and then I'll take questions. Be true to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Come with an unveiled face. Don't be pretentious with God. Be open with Him. When you go through something, for example, if 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 I if I um 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 hmm, let's just say if I went by a swimming pool and suddenly I'm just feeling very uneasy and just like feeling like you know. I can't, I just can't breathe, and I just have to live there right away. Oh my goodness. And, and all of a sudden, my next question to the Holy Ghost would be what has happened with water before that I'm not aware of? Am I perceiving as a prophet somebody else's feelings? After all that has been examined, what has happened with water? Some don't know why they are so afraid of dogs. You don't know you were beaten by a dog. Or you, you experience that. Maybe not to you. You just know that anything dogs, anything cats. You know cats can slap people. <laughs> huh. And the speed of a cat is next, is, is next level. You just believe anything cats. But you don't know your history with cats. Nobody told you when you were still crawling how the cat was beating you and, and slapping you. And from there the fear of it just came into your heart. And it's just been following you all the days of your life. God forbid. <laughs> so when you experience something you don't understand, have an unveiled face to so ask, Lord, what is this? What is going on? Why is this like this? And then allow him to give you an answer. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Were we blessed tonight? <laughs> Amen. Glory to Jesus. I'll take some questions now. You see, this is very practical. You hear the word, you're blessed by it, but this word will not heal you from trauma. It's action. It's the action. It's the action. Oh, this makes a lot of sense. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but take, don't run away from it. Take action. Tonight, glory to God. Please go ahead. Hallelujah. Good evening. Good evening, Apostle. Thank yes. you so much for the word. Um, so we have six questions online, but I believe you've already answered two, so we have four. Thank you. I believe I've answered four. <laughs> <laughs> so we have two. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Um, the first question is, when trying to deal with trauma and go higher, how do you deal with those stopping your movement because of culture? How do you deal with what? How do you deal with those stopping your movement because of culture? Stopping your movement because of culture. <clears throat> um, I, I, I think I understand where that person is coming from. Y you know, there, there are some situations. There are times when the traumatized person has to stay away from the place of trauma. You see, there are some cultures that perpetuates trauma. I'll give you an example. The elder one is a god. Uh, can never apologize. Is always right. If he does anything or she does anything, no, you can't say anything because that's the elder one. So, it's an, so, so, so it, it thrives on subduing people and just keeping people quiet. Okay? And that's so if you didn't watch Submission versus Intimidation, you can go and watch that. Amen. And she'll pay me later for <laughs> advertisement. <laughs> so, in some cases, some people would have to separate themselves from certain environments. There are some people who have to realize that it's time to move out from their parents' home at some point. So, so there, there, there are some things you look at. I'm not saying every home is a bed of trauma. I'm just trying to answer your question. You know, so, so th there are times where you, you look and say, okay, this environment cannot change to become a safe place for me. 
And you have to be wise enough to know, okay, it's better for them and it's better for me to now separate myself. Okay? Some people have not reached that stage where they can actually do that. Now, do I go there? Do I go there? Let me go there. Let me go there. There are some cultures that will say, oh, a lady cannot move out until she's moving into her parents, her husband's house. My question to those people is, what of when she's going to school in another city? <laughs> Don't let anybody use culture to damage your ability for... Uh, you see, that idea was what was happening in the villages and some other settings where that culture came out of, where it made no sense. You can't go and rent a house in the village, at least the ones we see in the movies. Rent a hut. Let me just rent your hut for one year. No. It's from your parents' house to your husband's house. You see, but those things have changed. So you need to look to see, okay, is this environment safe enough for me to be able to thrive? Because some abusers have not acknowledged their abuse. And they will not apologize for their abuse. Now, you are healed. But if you remain in, in those abusive spaces, then I can assure you, you're going to come back again to deal with trauma again. And again and again. And after a while, you just feel like there's no point dealing with it again. All right? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, the next question is, in the stage of re-evaluation forgiveness, since the fact that it has happened so long ago, you don't remember the person's name and what the person looks like, is the forgiveness process different? No, you, you, don't, you don't have to remember the person's name. All you have to say is, my, I forgive my mathematics teacher for, <laughs> for every act against humanity. <laughs> so long as you can mention their role, you don't have to remember their name per se. Okay? okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, third question is, after forgiveness, what if you don't desire for the person who caused the trauma to face the anger of God, but rather mercy? How do you come to terms with the judgments they are facing? That's a very good question. That's the dilemma, the victim's dilemma. And many times victims have a complicated relationship with the abusers. Um, you see, do you, do you know that even in our legal system, in many cases, it's the police that has a right, the right to, 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 to lay charges. The victim themselves don't even have, they don't have a say. And there's a reason for that. And that's, that's the reason why. Because the victim is not in the right frame. is not objective enough to decide that for themselves. <clears throat> do, do you know that <laughs> that's, that's an amazing question my advice to you is this let justice take its course God is very merciful but there are you see it's not, it's not everything everything is not about God killing somebody no 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 no, no. sometimes you just break their nails There are some times where it's just it's, it's light punishment, but would bring enough remorse to enforce a change of behavior. Some of us have allowed monsters to go scot free. You are safe, but there's a trail of blood because of your silence. And this, this is the aspect where it becomes very, very interesting. You, you see, there are some victims that God will also punish. And God's hand is also in the victim's punishment because of their quietness. Imagine knowing that someone abused you as a child sexually. And this person is now working at a daycare. And you know, and you're quiet. And you tell me that you would escape judgment. No, that's, 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 that's unthinkable. That's impossible. 
So because I don't want them to get hurt. No, Th then it means you are, a, you, are, you are aiding and abetting such a behavior. So you release that and let the person's remorse be what would answer for them in the place of judgment with God. If you let a person who should be judged, if you attempt to let them go free, you would also be judged. And it makes no sense for affliction to rise a second time. Praise God. Please go ahead. Praise God. Um, before I read the next question, we do have four more questions. Hmm. <laughs> I'll just take... Okay, keep on going, and then I'll, I'll tell you when to stop. Okay. Um, this question is, if you continuously have dreams from a particular location... Have what, sorry? Um, if you have dreams, dreams. from a particular okay. location yep. or point in your life, example, you gave, um, the example you gave about the boarding school, um, but you can't pinpoint any specific traumatic, traumatic event there, what do you do? Then it means that the best. Then it means that the best would be for you to deal with it in meditation, where you tell the Lord, "I'm admitting there's a problem because I heard my pastor told me that if I keep going back to a particular spot, there's something there. There's something there. Holy Spirit." Open my understanding. Please remember, no matter how much you pray about these things, God knows when you are ready to address certain traumatic incidents. There are some people that are not yet ready to know that the person feeding them also tried to kill them. They are not, they are not yet ready to know that because uh, they, they still need to be fed. So after passing through a certain phase, then that, that can now come for it to now be resolved. So you take that prayer to God and believe that he knows what he's doing and you leave it alone. I can assure you, one day, one of us was here when I thought about trauma last year or two years ago or so, and this individual just recollected that something happened to her while she was Young, I mean, that incident is not something you should be able to forget. But yet, that word went in and pushed that memory out. Very, 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 very deep. I mean, what word do I use? Damaging situation. But the word brought it out in due time. In due time. So that's the faith we have to have. I'll take two more questions, please, and then we'll pray. Thank you. Um, so this question is, how do we ensure that we are not traumatizing others? Um, hmm. The best way is to deal with your own trauma. Because if you are traumatized, I can assure you, everybody around you, if they are not careful, have been traumatized by you already. Because a, 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 a hurt person will hurt people. All right, so the best way is to deal with your trauma. Number two is to learn how to manage your, your love. And um, next month, we'll be dealing with uh, things around love. Um, so, amen. amen. So please get ready. It's going to be a wonderful time, yes. The final okay. question. Okay, final question is, what about when people get tired of talking to you about it? Sometimes this trauma comes back to knock and the person may be weak. Others who were once supporters may seem to be over it. What next? I don't understand that question. Can you read that again, please? Um, so this person is trying to say, what about when people get tired of talking about trauma? Mm -hmm. So for example, if they're talking to others about their trauma and that person is, that friend is getting tired of it, they're oh. asking, um, if the trauma comes back to knock and the person may be weak, others who were in one supporters may seem to be over it, what do they do next? 
Number one, I've not said you should go and talk to a friend about trauma. Um, so sometimes people just hear what they want to hear. I've not said that. Um, I didn't say after this message you look for who is closest to you, who is in the bus where you are in. I said, please, I want to talk about trauma. I, I didn't say that. Um, I did, that will cause you way more damage. That will cause you way more damage. A person can love you, but don't have the wisdom to help to navigate what you need to navigate. All right? You can, you can meet with the therapist. They have a, 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 a responsibility to be confidential. All right? Um, and a Christian counselor or therapist is even way better. Um, it is possible that people can be tired. You see, one of the things that I've seen happen, please, let's pay attention. One of the things I've seen happen is that people can admit they are traumatized because now people are used to now say, oh, yes, my trauma, my trauma, my trauma. They are just stuck in step one. And some people can recount. They talk about it and talk about it, but they've not allowed the reevaluation to happen. A reevaluation means that someone is coming to change your perspective of what happened to you. So I want to say this to us. People will get tired. If you just stay in step one, step two, and you don't allow a stubbornness, not to allow the, the, your view of the trauma to be, to be changed, your perspective to be changed. And it's not fair, too, to just come and just dump on people, but you don't want them to talk to you, to try to help you see a different perspective. That's not fair. And that's not what I'm teaching. Oh, you know, you're not supportive. You know, Apostle said this. You're not even listening to me. No, no, you also listen to them. So after you've recounted, be quiet. And let them now help to give you a different perspective. Now, you now have to take the perspective. What if you refuse to forgive? You'll come back again next week to talk about trauma again. And after a while, people will get tired. But, but listen to me, this thing doesn't take time. Thank you very much. It doesn't take time to resolve. It doesn't take time to resolve. Admit something has happened. Make up your mind if there's a human being that is trustworthy and is wise, has wisdom to help you navigate the situation. Or if the Holy Ghost is, is the Holy Spirit, you, you, you take it to that person, recount. Then step three, allow your perspective of that situation. Like the example I gave, the man looked at the father who passed away and said, oh, wow, he just got healed. That's a change in perspective. Allow that perspective to change. And step four, the, the reformation process. To now begin to live the way you were supposed to live before. I remember encountering someone. She's here now, restored by the grace of God. But a few years ago, every time I saw her, she would come with different boxes. I mean, it seemed, okay, I mean, I used to be in the consulting environment, you know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a consulting bag where they just roll and have all kinds of things in it. But one day I looked at her and I, and I said, oh my goodness, this is a nomad. And the Lord just helped me understand that she's not feeling settled. It's a sign of trauma, just not feeling settled. And, and people who have been moving from here to here to here to here to there can, can you know, typically experience, not all, but some of them experience that. Just a, a feeling of not being settled. So one day I, I, I ministered to her, said, no, 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 this is a nomad lifestyle. No. And then she opened up and said, yeah, that's actually true. So every time she leaves the house, she just feels like she should take as much as she needs to take. <laughs> just, just in case. <laughs> Praise God. All kinds of situations. But now you see how you not know that she's the one I'm referring to. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Put your hands together for Jesus. Please rise up on your feet tonight. And let us be our brothers and our sisters keeper. And just pray and say, Father, thank you for your word that I've heard tonight. I thank you for your word that I've heard tonight. I thank you for your word that I've heard tonight. Thank you for your word that I've heard tonight. Thank you because you love me so much to share your word with me. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Can somebody just thank the Lord tonight? Just thank him. Mm. You eat everything. You eat everything. We will shout for your glory. Yes, come on now. Just keep on praying. Father, thank you. Yes. We will shout for your, your praise with yes. everything, with everything. Oh, thank you, Jesus. With everything, we will shout for your glory. Libos cobre embreniendo son dramahanos. Shatus caliba ha trenino son dia. Nentele costo ferendis calamandos. Ne costo ferreninos con la brachtenosia. Metu sola paia talabai. Redo solo pale que este le baba satala bayato se redisto per ni mano oh yes lord thank you jesus please i want you to i would have said you hold your neighbor's hand but uh, we're not going to do that I want you to pray for the person next to you. You don't have to look at them, but just pray for them and say, Father, touch this person's heart. And I stand in the gap for those connected virtually. Father, touch this person's heart. Break down every wall that trauma has built in the mighty name of Jesus. Can someone begin to intercede for their neighbors tonight? Jada barada la ba castra biandos, jetu la preni sondre mahandos, reba ba shata la bratano sandeli bosh katabia, letre mingro di ambrente lo sondre mahandos, meti tile covere minde li paratas kataye, lindo bosh kalaba ande zizi angri di bosh kataya. Rebeli ke selemende solam rande, lim brondish keng bronana mando sondre menese taya, ye talabayande boko shataya gada gada gada, iko to yande bash kele mahande sondre mahandos, ye ya 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 boshali endala ma sondo ba, ribosh kele mahande boko sonto labandos, metus ke payates kaya. Let every wall that trauma has built come down in the name of Jesus. Oh, ya tili maye palika solamanos. Ye te librek teno rominande shkelebaha. Let every wall that trauma has created in the hearts of your people, let those walls come down. Let them come down. Let them come down. Come down. Nela le toli maya talaba, retus kabali ando boko sande. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. How many of you know that we need help to be able to take a step in dealing with trauma? We need help. We need help because for some it's so daunting. It's been there for so long. I know the relief people feel when they finally share what they've been holding for many years. But many don't know they can get such relief. So I extend my faith in the name of Jesus to every single person who has been carrying burdens, who has been carrying baggages for years, maybe months or even days. I declare in the name of Jesus, let the grace be released. To get help instantly. To send a message. To take a step. In the mighty name of Jesus. That as many have been trapped by trauma. 
that Lord, that trap will no longer hold sway over them in the name of Jesus. Life is beautiful when we are trauma free. Lord, I ask that the beauty of life will become apparent to every single person in the name of Jesus. Anyone that is stuck in any of these stages in dealing with trauma, let the grace of God move them to the next step right now in the name of Jesus. Father, let there be testimonies. Let there be testimonies. We give you praise, we bless you, we adore you. In Jesus' name mighty name we have prayed somebody shout hallelujah thank you jesus if we have, if we have the image from the healing of the from sunday we can have that on the screen so we'll just glorify jesus many instant healings took place on sunday by the grace of god hallelujah we bless the lord we bless the lord we'll just give them a few minutes so this was, this was a child. This is what it looked like if you look on the uh, screen in, the, in there. That's how bad it was. That's the child's body. And let's go to after the service. Glory to Jesus. So the mother got validation, went to children's church upstairs right after second service. And the child, the, the thing was cleared already. And if you look closely, you see that the rest is just stuff that will just dry out and then it's all gone. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And many, 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 many other testimonies. There are many people here, you have testimonies you've not shared. Please make up your mind today. I'll go and share my testimony. Just send us an email, testimony at cccghq.org. Don't overthink it. Don't rationalize it. Just share your testimony. So people can be blessed. People can be lifted. People can be encouraged by your testimony. So people see that Jesus is real. And his power is real. In the name of Jesus. You're here in this service today. You're not born again. I'd love to pray with you. It will be my joy to lead you into the kingdom of God. It will be my joy to extend the offer of salvation to you. The offer of a brand new life that will take you from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. And the ask is very simple. If you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and confess with your mouth, the Bible says you'll be saved. So please, you know you're not saved here right now. Or you want to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. Please repeat this prayer after me and say with me, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today. Please forgive me my sins. I know you died on the cross for me and was raised on the third day that I may be saved. Jesus, save my soul. Come into my heart and make my life your own. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, congratulations. We're happy for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. For those who said the prayer online, we'd love to hear from you. Our web address is cccghq.org. Slash save. There's a form waiting for you there. Once you get there, please fill out the form completely. We'd love to send you materials to help you grow in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, for those who said the prayer and they are here in the auditorium, we'd love to, you know, um, give you a book titled, Now That You're Born Again, What Next? So please help us by waving your hands. We have a team member walking down the aisle who will just receive you and give you that book. You made Jesus your Lord and Savior in this Bible studies right now. Just wave your hands so we can acknowledge you and get the book to you. Anybody like that here today? Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands together for Jesus. Thank you, Father. While we're praying, the Lord made me privy to a lady's thoughts. And she was saying, oh, so I have to talk to my husband then to help me deal with this trauma. I'll repeat what I said before. 
I, I never said that a person that loves you is capable of helping you to deal with trauma. All right? So, husbands, know your capability. If the capacity is there, go ahead. If it's not there, refer them to a place where they... You, the fact that you love them does not mean you have to be the one. One of the leaders said to me last week, in helping someone deal with trauma, he said, now he understands why I say that information is heavy. There are some things you hear. If you don't have the grace to bury what you've heard, you will not be the same. You know, with some parents whose kids' nose rules are blocked, and they don't have the tools. They suck it, the mucus out of the child's nose rings. Aha. Uh -huh. just, just, I'll leave you with that picture for a few minutes. There's no way you support someone dealing with trauma that you not taste poison yourself. So you don't want to be passing poison all through your family. So if the grace is there, go ahead, but be humble enough to know your capability. You know, uh, at the end of this, so make sure that your home is a very, very safe place. And if a friend is coming to you beginning to talk about, because some just talk, you need to just tell them, mm, no, 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 no. I, I don't know. I can't deal with that for you. Go and get help, please. Are we together? Please, let's be our brother's keeper in the name of Jesus Christ. Were you blessed tonight? Were you blessed tonight? Now we are going to shout. We are going to shout a shout of victory. I'm going to say one, two, three. And by the count of three, we'll shout a loud shout. One, two, three, shout! Glory! 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 Amen. You should shout every now and then. Just be in your car and shout, but not at the traffic light. <laughs> so if you don't look at you and say, is she, is she okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. It's going to be a wonderful night. May the Lord visit you powerfully and mightily in the name of Jesus. You come back to the hour of meditation on Saturday lighter. Lighter. This is your week of perfection of restoration, of transformation, of healing in the name of Jesus. You no longer be a victim of life. You no longer be crushed in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything hindering your ability to move forward with speed, I command it arrested in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for motion. Thank you for precision. Thank you for motion. Thank you for precision. Everybody here has the capability to be great. I declare that everything hampering, hindering that greatness from manifesting. I take authority over it now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, and blessed be your name. Father, heal hearts, heal homes, heal marriages, relationships, friendships. Let there be an outpouring of healings, even in churches in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, and blessed be your name in Jesus precious name we have prayed let us share the grace together one to go may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the presence of the lord forever and ever amen ask your neighbor look at your neighbor have you registered for the home conference wait for an answer have you 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 don't look like you've registered <laughs> God bless you. Hallelujah.
Welcome back. I'm sure you were blessed by that amazing service. If you were blessed, please leave a comment on this video as a testimony of how the Lord has moved in your life. We would be haunted and excited to read what Jesus has done just for you. You can also reignite your faith by listening to the messages again on our podcast. And you can find us at Cornerstone Christian Church of God on Spotify or wherever you get your audio. Before you go, our book for this month is Failing Forward, Turning Mistakes into Stepping Stones for Success by John C. Maxwell. We invite you to join us and to read our monthly selections to help complement everything that you've received today. Also, join us for our powerful night prayers this month, and it's held on Friday, March 29th at 10 p.m. The theme for this month's night prayers is, are you ready for this? Lifted. I am lifted. You are lifted. We are lifted in Jesus' name. God has so much in store for you this month. So continue to connect and be blessed by God's word here at CCCG. See you again very soon. Hallelujah. Let me hear you say that this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hereby baptize you today in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. You have access to riches in Christ. Power, wisdom, glory, I mean, you name it. Jesus has made.